So the next thing I'd like you to do is turn to the next slide, which is the basics of the patent application process. And we're going to go through a few common scenarios of what happens to utility patent applications after they're filed. Now in very rare cases, as you can see along the top bar, you file an application, you get all the claims allowed, and you have a patent magically arrive um, in your mailbox after you pay the issue fee. This rarely happens because most of the time the patent attorneys will not write the claims so narrowly that they get them allowed the first time around. There have been cases though where you've been surprised, we've been surprised, um, where the examiner says, yeah, it looks completely patentable, good to go. So one scenario, which is not a very common scenario, is the one that appears along the top band of this particular PowerPoint slide. And it shows a case where you file the application, all the claims are allowed the first time around, and the patent issues. This rarely happens because most of the time the patent attorney writes the claims broadly enough, so there's at least an initial 35 USC 103 rejection. Moving down one level, uh, you run into a more common case where the application is filed, the USPTO examiner examines it, and issues an initial rejection of at least some of the claims, usually citing 35 USC 102 or 35 USC 103 as the reasons. You then respond to the office action and uh, they end up allowing enough claims so you take an issued patent at the end of it. Going to the third bar, you can have a patent application filed you get an office action rejecting at least some of the claims. You file a response, and then the USPTO examiner responds with a final office action saying, no, you're not going to get a patent on this. We're rejecting all the claims. At that point, then, you can also abandon the application and decide not to throw any more money after it. The fourth bar down shows that even after you've received a final office action, you still have the ability to communicate with the examiner and see if you can get a patent allowed off of the application. The fifth bar down shows a situation that's fairly common where an inventor files a patent application on an invention as he or she has built it at that time. Usually it takes a couple of years to get the patent application examined by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and so by the time they come back with an office action the inventor has made some substantial changes and improvements to the invention. So when they get the office action back often the improvements they've made combined with the rejections given by the USPTO cause them to say, well, let's continue with this first application to see if we can get a patent out of it, but let's also file a continuation in part, or CIP, application uh, that encompasses the changes we've made to our invention. And that way we can have two patent applications pending at the same time. It's possible that both will end up issuing as patents.